All right, Gene, as mentioned, we're going to try to keep a weekly, sorry, programming video up. Uh, hopefully, um, if, you want, if you're interested in knowing what we got planned for the week, for the most part, it's really easy for you guys to look ahead and use Wad up. Highly encourage you to do so and highly encourage you to record what we do. And so along those lines, let's talk real quick. We finished our deadlift cycle. First of all, really proud of you guys. I, I haven't had a full debrief from Lewis who coached that evening. But for me personally, when I watched you guys lift, for one, technique was better. Um, zero incidences, meaning zero overshooting, unable to support the weight we're lifting. That's tough, right? The, the deadlift uh, ego, I know for myself, is huge, right? You, you kind of have numbers you want to lift, but you can't always lift them. Um, things to keep in mind, and I've said this, it, it pertains more so in the deadlift than any other lift, but if you lift outside of your posture, you run into trouble. So I let's just use some real numbers, or sorry, fake numbers, but easy to know numbers. If you're deadlifting for a max and you can hold 90 kilos with perfect form and you continue on, could still lift 100 kilos, but your back is rounded, you really sabotage your future enjoyment of deadlifting. Number one is any percentage work is going to be wrong, right? Because when we're doing, it, it, I would say it's, it's uh, somewhat acceptable to bend slightly when testing, you're, you're trying to push yourself to the absolute max and sometimes it's just a little bit above. But when that happens, it skews all your percentages because you're not gonna do an 80% with bad form. Or we'll call you out on it and you'll be aware and you'll be like, oh man, I can't lift my 80% for five. Like what's going on? Like not feeling so good. And so what happens is you either always have to lift less than the per recommended per percentage work, which sometimes is a big blow to the ego, ego, which in reality it shouldn't be because in reality it is the wrong percentage when you're, um, when you input it, when you use your one rep max is, is wrong. So every time you lift, you feel maybe a little bit like you're underachieving or you are super diligent and working at your percentage and you're always slightly broken in your posture. So you're constantly reinforcing Poor technique, which doesn't help you actually get stronger because I don't know if I've said this to you or if you heard it before, your body, whether you test it or not, is capable of lifting X amount of weight with perfect form. Whether you achieve it or not is, is not the point. That one lift doesn't make you exponentially stronger, right? It just proves what you can do. All of the work that we program, like when we start a cycle, which we're doing in the back squat, which is where this conversation really should start. But all the work we do in the cycle to get you to the test is where the magic happens. So regardless of what your test is, you could be getting stronger the whole time. If all the work you're doing to get stronger isn't done well, well, you're probably not gonna get stronger, number one or you're going to be practicing incorrectly because you're always above, working above your threshold of good form. So you can see why I wanted to make videos and different, uh, different videos for different things. So yeah, stick with what you can do well. I can't stress it enough. So um, if I look ahead, Monday, we're starting a back squat cycle. As always, we break it down into slower moving pieces. We've got tempo work. Tempo work is hard. I mean, if you're doing it right, as in doing the tempo, it's hard no matter what percentage you're at. So don't get too, too kind of caught up in lifting a lot of weight in the tempo. Get super focused in on moving as well as you possibly can. It's your chance to fix. It's your chance to be aware of sort of your mistakes and hopefully over the course of the next bunch of weeks when we repeat, you get better. Uh, if I look ahead at the remainder of the strength work, um, 
We've got some nice Olympic lifting on Wednesday. We're going shoulder to overhead on Friday. And similar, okay, similar to the shoulder to overhead, we're doing push press this time. We did a bunch of strict press. So we have a mini cycle happening with that. Hopefully you get to attend them. Um, and there's some details in there, but again, doing your best to record, to make the most out of all of those sessions. And fast forwarding to Fry Yay, again for our strength piece. Some more Olympic lifting. So we've got quite complex barbell stuff happening, which we like. And, 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 yeah. And hopefully the deadlift work that we did leading up to that really reinforces some postures that you're gonna need going forward. Um, weather permitting, of course we can modify it slightly. Tuesday's engine class is a uh, classic benchmark workout, um, which uh, I happen to really, 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 really like. Having said that, I do feel that the volume can be a tad high. So you might see me tweak or modify that for you depending on your experience. Because again, more isn't always better. Uh, sometimes more is a good grueling test. But when it really sabotages your future workouts, arguably doesn't need to be that much volume. And as always, a ride fit. Y you know, you think there's these formulas and we've run out of them to kind of uh, work you on that bike. But they're infinite. Um, I personally love the challenge as well as feel that the bike fit, which I think is the, probably the premise for all of you guys as well, minus a select few that really do love to do CrossFit for the sake of being better at CrossFit. But being better on your bike afterwards or, or in life is really a added bonus to the training. So highly suggest you come to those bike fit classes or ride fit classes, if indeed you be doing biking. And um, lastly, engine on Saturday looks like a nice bunch of intervals. Um, further to that, the overview of the Olympic weightlifting sessions, really helpful the way they've been laid out. Uh, kudos to the coaches for the programming. But before we get to the lifting of the weights, there seems to be a really good opportunity to do a lot of the pieces of the puzzle to try and hammer in. Because as a coach, when you start lifting and it's heavy, I can't say that I'm really all that helpful to make change on your next lift. What I am helpful on is when you're doing five, let's say empty bar muscle cleans to address and attack a lot of the pieces on the bar turnover, that will actually help you better for that session. So. Uh, that's a more than a long enough video. Uh, that's the week ahead of programming. Hopefully it's not as rainy throughout the week as it is today. It does call for some rain. But um, looking forward to Monday. Looking forward to getting the squat dialed in. See you guys soon.